Hey there guys, and welcome back to another video. I'm gonna move this bit, so sorry. So I'm gonna be talking about this person who says seven reasons why Christianity over Buddhism, which I think is why they chose Christianity over Buddhism. I have nothing against people who do, who are Christian Christians or Buddhism or Buddhist or any one of those or any other. I'm just pointing out their flaws of their setup. That's all I'm doing. Don't attack this person. So yeah, this might be a part, there might be a part two of this if it ever comes to be. So the first... It, uh, point is unique and set apart. Buddhism's beliefs are very close to those of Hinduism. How can you, how then can you determine one religion over the other? The way you can determine which one is Buddhism and which one his, is Hinduism is Hinduism has gods and goddesses. Buddhism does not. It is one person, aka Buddha or the prince. I don't know how to actually say his first name because it's pretty hard to say, but he was a prince and he learned the ways of Buddhism and he came up with it on his ways and and that's how so it began it wasn't he was originally a Hindu a Hindi and so on and so forth you can actually read about both of them and determine the difference it's very straightforward one of them has gods and goddesses the other one does not the main thing along with Hinduism is a religion and Buddhism is technically a philosophy I am a I am a Buddhist so as opposed as opposed to Christianity, the U.S. has several factors that no other religion has, including the Savior, forgiveness, a personal God, and salvation through faith. Just like Judaism, just like Islam, hmm? You're not Christianity is not as special as people make it out to be. Christianity is was built upon because Jesus was a Jew, just like how Islam was built upon be with Christianity and Judaism. None of them are you as unique. Literally, no religion is unique. It's basically all the same, in a sense. And then the unique aspects of Christianity is that Jesus was re resur resurrected, aka brought back to life, which used to happen back then because there weren't professionals. There weren't people who could actually tell who was dead and who was not. They just determined, okay, this person's not waking up. It's dead, when they could have been in a coma. Could have been the legit reason. And also, it's not proven Jesus was actually alive since there was no bones of him. So literally, it could be said that Jesus was never alive. With so many wise men recorded throughout history, why is Buddha set apart? He was a prince at first. He had no way to see the outside, which I still have speculations of. If a kid has no way to go outside, wouldn't they want to go outside? Would they actually pester about it? Would they be like, why can't I go outside? Why can't I go outside? They would be the annoying little shits they would be. Who else would not? Why would I, a Christian, have a uni leave a unique religion with a s resurrected fa savior for one that has an average founder that is very similar to another religion? Okay. Number two, contradictions. Depending on which set of Buddhism you're from, you're either aesthetic Pansetic or monosetic, with such huge contradictions on belief, how can you p possibly know which one's right? Just like different branches of Christianity, there's Catholic, um, Lutherism, regular Christian, there's different branches of Christianity. How do you know which one's right? Hmm? Answer so that one. Just saying, I'm just pointing those this out. Christianity has only one God, just like Judaism and Islam. Not as unique as you think. Buddhism says that there that the desire are the root of all suffering, th that desires are the root of all suffering, you should rid of yourself all desires. But to do that, you need to des need a desire to rid yourself of all desires. It is a contradiction in itself, and what of good desires to love someone or have someone's life, how can, how do they cause harm? I mean, I don't think there's ever been said. I mean, who some people who do go far into Buddhism who want to become a monk, then that's how most Buddhists are just like they're happy as they are. They live by some of the codes, which are not really codes. I call them codes because, you know, they're kind of like, here's the rules. You can kind of do all of them. You don't have to. We're not forcing you. Just be yourself. Just don't harm fucking people, okay? Just don't harm people. That's all we ask. It's mainly that. But we all have desires. That's a common human trait. We can all acknowledge that. We all have desires it's mainly the bad like do you desire revenge don't do that do you desire to harm people don't do that and we understand there are going to be people who do do that because they're like i'm a psychopath i can't really control that sorry about that 
why would I leave Christianity? And they just keep repeating, why would I leave Christianity for something like this? Basically. Next one. Number three, a solid source. Some sects sets see Buddha as a god and others do not. He never claimed to be a god, just someone who was showing that way. There really is no complaint. He basically said he's not a god. Some people do because it's a re- people kind of as a religion, so people question is Buddha actually god? And then they have to ex- then people have to explain who are Buddha, who are Buddhist, that no, he's not a god. This is darkly unlike Jesus, who is God in flesh. He's not God. He is the son of God from what I have learned and read and studied. He's technically not God. Buddha gave no explanation for Nirvana. No details. It's just basically any of the fucking want. That's basically what Nirvana is. Do you want to be in a meadow? Go on ahead. You want to be in a forest? Go ahead. You want to be in your childhood home? Go on ahead. You can be in anything you want to be. That's basically Nirvana. It's anybody's happiness. For me, I want to be in a meadow that's connected with a forest. That's my Nirvana. This is directly unlike Jesus, who gave great detail about heaven. I don't think I ever read about that. Just a bunch of clouds. And so they repeat themselves. Number four, logic. In Buddhism, sin is a misstep, an error from ignorance. Yet the consequences are having to repeat life over again. Isn't that illogical? Likewise, no, you're not always going to have to repeat your life. Some people see that as a bad. Some people are like, sweet, I get to be reincarnated. I think Hinduism is the one where they don't want to be reincarnated. Buddhism is, if you get reincarnated, that's pretty good. If you don't, that's okay. It, they really don't care. And yes, a sin is a misstep. It's kind of like, oops, I did this. And you can make that up. And sometimes you do only have one life. And other times you get reincarnated so that you can see the other side of life. That's how I see it, at least. Buddhism keeps quiet on how the world started and it says it's an endless cycle of birth and death. First off, this is... Ex- that is ignore, ignoring a huge and important question. Sec, I mean, what's the, the question? Secondly, it's illogical. Why would we be created only to die over and over again? Because why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? Who wouldn't want to die and come back again? That would be kind of fun, don't you think? Like, oh, I came back as a flower. Next second, oh, I came back as a bean. Next second, oh, I came back as a human child. Next second, oh, I came back as a dog. I get to lick my own balls. <laughs> I'm just joking, you know. Um, Some people do. Um, if you're like me who believes in science, it's basically Big Bang Theory all over again. So, Also in Buddhism, people are ca- characterized as having no individual souls. That seems illogical given the evidence. Everyone has distinctive personalities, different fingerprints, and even morals that hint at a soul. I mean, if you believe in the whole soul aspect. Yes, we all, we all have our different personalities we have our different fingerprints that's a given and different morals most of our morals are pretty the same when you look at an individual who is in a group very similar to themselves some people hang around people who are highly who are highly the same as them twins not so much because twins could differ one another all the time but if you do believe in the whole soul thing whatever and then they talk about the whole like their whole logic of things like going to hell hell actually sounds like fun at this point five a loving god i might have to end it after this i'll check just a second yeah i'll end it at number five a loving god in buddhism reality is impersonal and non-related therefore it is not loving no shit it's not supposed to be loving but we do have a thing called karma you go karma is a bitch does not care about your fucking feelings but yeah life is not supposed to be lovely Reality is not supposed to be all flowers and sunshine and unicorns and glitter shit. That's the point of it. Unlike Christianity in which God is love and sent his son to be murdered for us. Okay, if God's supposed to be all loving, then why the fuck does he harm people? Why the fuck does he make people the way they are if they if he really loved his children? Answer that. Why would I leave a religion where, I, where I'm loved so much for who I am where I'm not? Just be a good fucking person. So I'll have to wrap up this. I'll read the rest i'll read the last two and give my points on all this but yeah i'll end the video here guys i hope you like this please don't get angry at this i'm just stating my own opinion i don't care what religion you practice just please be a good fucking person